Hello, this is Arul from Valoi, back again with part three of our series on using the EC35. This is the third and final part of um, taking the EC35 from the box to a final uh, positive product. Um, so in this part, we're going to talk about uh, this part where you've taken the pictures on the camera and they've landed on an SD card or you've imported them to the computer. And now we have to uh, take negatives to positives. I'm going to assume that you will be able to figure out how to do um, color positives. So we're going to focus on uh, the negatives instead. Um, so here we're going to demonstrate two types of software. We're using the standalone Film Lab app and then uh, we're going to use uh, Negative Lab Pro for Lightroom. These are the two most commercial alternatives, the most polished alternatives, and we're using them because they're easy to use for beginners. However, there are other choices. Um, there's a list of choices in the manual and also in, um, on our website. If you're interested in finding out more about those alternatives for conversion software, you can go and read up on those. There are some good ones, some free ones, some paid ones, but we're using these because they're easy and uh, quite polished. So um, I'm going to take the pictures into Lightroom and meet you there. OK, so here we are in the library module in Lightroom. We've imported the pictures just using the um, SD card reader here. And um, we've gone to the library module with, um, with our folder of pictures. So uh, as you can see, they're still negatives. So we have to process them into positives. Uh, we're going to do that here using Negative Lab Pro first, and then uh, if you want to see the Film Lab app version of this process, you can click the timestamp to go there. Um, so the first thing we're doing is uh, white balancing for the background. This is in the uh, Negative Lab Pro manual, which I highly recommend that you read. Uh, so I've just chosen the white balance tool in the library module and white balance off the um, rebate here. And then I'm gonna go click sync, <clears throat> make sure the white balance is ticked, everything else we can just leave off and then click synchronize. This will paste the same setting across all the pictures and since we've taken everything on a consistent setting, um, they will all look the same. So this is important for Negative Lab Pro's uh, processing. It assumes that you've already done this step so you'll get the best colors by doing that. Uh, now. Opening Negative Lab Pro, provided you have it installed, you do need to go buy it and download it and um, install it in Lightroom. You go to File, Plugin Extras, and then to Negative Lab Pro. This will open up the little application here on the side. Alternatively, you can use, um, so on Mac, it's Option N, it just opens the menu. It's slightly different on Windows. Look at the documentation um, for your specific language, it also varies by language on the Windows and uh, for your system. So with this menu, there's a few things to keep in mind. Um, most things we're gonna leave on default. So this source uh, is just referring to are using a scanner, a digital camera, we're gonna leave it on digital camera, obviously. Um, the color model, you can play around with. Uh, if you're scanning black and white, this is the option you would use black and white, obviously. I typically leave it on basic, I find that to be the most neutral and a good editing start starting point. Then there's pre-saturation. Again, I like to leave it on default. You can play around with it. It might be useful if you have particularly dull negatives or if you like a particular style of low saturation or something like that, you can use that. Finally, the most important setting here is the border buffer. Uh, you can see it's set to preview and 15% here. If we untick the preview, you can see in the background here that the pictures um, expand. So uh, what Negative Lab Pro is doing here is cropping in. This is not the final crop that it will spit out. Uh, it will crop in, do the conversion, and then remove the crop again. Uh, and this percentage refers to how much it's cropping. You don't have to have the pre preview ticked, uh, but it's nice to uh, show that all of the border around the image is cropped out, which is the goal. We don't want any black border or any rebate, which is the white part around to confuse Negative Lab Pro. So I typically leave it on the preview, 15%. I can do more if I'm doing, um, for example, if I'm doing square negatives on medium format, I'll add 20%, but 15% is a good, uh, good point. Um, after that, 
there's nothing more you need to do before you convert. Uh, just be aware there's an apply button down here. That's not very useful um, at this point. You want to click the convert 18 negatives and that will start the process. So in a second, I'll come back once it's done that. Okay, so that's the negatives converted. It takes about two to three seconds on a relatively quick computer, um, a bit more if you have a slower computer, but generally it's not more than a minute or two for a full roll of 36 exposures. Um, so as you can see, I'm in the library module. I like this because it gives me a nice overview and kind of shows me the relationship between the pictures. Um, you can go to the develop module and use the software there too, but you'll only be able to see one picture at a time. Uh, the developer of Navigator Lab Pro does say that the settings are smoother if you're in the develop module rather than the library module. So choose, pick your poison there. Um, we can see, so from here, I'm gonna go through some pictures and show you some of the common edits that I do. And uh, right from the start here, we can see two pictures with a lot of green in them. And you might be able to see that uh, the yes there's green but the gray areas and kind of the shadows and things are very magenta and that's very very common on uh, pictures of greenery I see a lot of pictures posted online um, with if from forests or uh, from parks and that sort of thing where all of the paths or the walkways uh, which should be brown or gray are very pinkish magenta it's not a good look um, so we do want to focus primarily first on this um, temperature setting and tint setting here on the bottom. There are a lot of settings here for uh, brightness and uh, various shadows, the shadows and whites here and things you can play around with. That's more personal taste. I like getting a good starting point before we, um, we go there. <clears throat> so uh, generally I will leave the white balance to auto, auto neutral and then edit from there. You can play with this, uh, with these different settings. So this is an auto warm. You can see it makes it very warm. Sometimes it has less of an effect. Sometimes it has more of an effect. Auto cool obviously makes it very cold. Auto average. It it can be helpful. Generally, I find that they're relatively either they're fine or they're all off. Um, there are also some just presets. So these first four ones. This is auto does a bit of an analysis of the picture, tries to average things. Um, whereas these bottom ones are just um, straight numbers. So you can see the standard one just gives you 17 and 10. That's just the value it, it throws at you. Um, but let's do what I would usually do, which is start with an auto neutral and go from there. So because we have a very, uh, we have a green background, negative lab pro thinks, oh, lots of green, we need to balance that with lots of magenta. And that's why we get this magenta picture. So I'm gonna dial back in some green here. So I'm just, I'm, we're talking about quite small um, changes. So I'm using these um, arrows here and we can see I just dialed in five points and we took it from, okay, it looks very magenta to at 5.59 5 to just minus, minus a half. And that just takes us into a much more usable, pleasant picture. Now we can see it's a little bit cold now that we've dialed in some green. So I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, warm yellow temperature. So somewhere around there, that's quite good. Uh, if you do want to preview your picture, you can just click apply and that will apply all the settings and then you can hit enter and uh, that will open the picture as a full picture. Again, you can go to the develop module if you want. It's a bit slow. And then again, you jump back into negative lab pro. Uh, and this is important. You want to make most of your changes in negative lab pro. So. I'm probably not gonna make any further changes to that picture, I think it's quite nice. But you can see that this picture has exactly the same problem. Um, so in this case, I'd probably go through and sync the settings. So I'm gonna go back to the library module and back to the grid view. And then I'm gonna click Command D. And um, now it's just deselect all these things. Uh, I'm selecting the first two pictures, going here and then clicking Sync Settings. Um, sync Scenes is uh, quite a different thing. It, uh, we're talking about two different levels of processing here. Uh, Negative Lab Pro does the kind of conversion processing and that's the scene sync, whereas the setting sync is kind of the post things that you do manually afterwards. So we're going to use the sync setting and you'll see that that does exactly the same thing to the second picture, creating a nice kind of balanced image. 
Um, <clears throat> quickly, just if you want to add a slightly different look, if you prefer uh, a more contrasty look, for example, I often use the Pack-Ons preset. It, it changes the um, contrast levels and darkness and that sort of thing. I, I quite like this, this Pack-On preset. Um, you can also go and do manual adjustments in there if you want to. Also note that you can do um, individual adjustments of white balance in the shadows, in the highlights and in the mids. Um, that can be useful for the shadows sometimes, especially some films go a little magenta in the shadows and you can go ahead and, and add a little bit of extra green, green there if you want. We're not going to go too deeply into that. I'm going to show you a few more pictures here uh, that have similar but slightly different problems. Okay, so here I pulled up a picture that has kind of a similar problem in that it has a dominant color that's affected the rest of the picture and the processing. Um, so here I'm talking about the sky. It's quite common in the same way we had a lot of greenery in the other picture, now we have a lot of sky. And it again causes problems. Um, it has other problems, probably the negative is slightly underexposed, but um, primarily we're interested in, in fixing the white balance at this point. We can see that it's, it's a little, you can see the sky is almost gray in a weird way. So it's seen, oh, it has a lot of blue here, so we need to add yellow. No, 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 we're smarter than that. We want the picture to look like a sky, which should be blue. And just dialing in about 10 points of uh, blue here, we're going to a much more usable picture. I'm gonna add a little bit of green as well. I can see that these greens look a bit dull in the foreground and still the whites look ni nice and neutral. Um, as I said, it does have some of the problems here the darks are quite dark but as you can see there's not much we can do about that they are a little underexposed unfortunately so we're probably going to leave them as they are uh, we can go to another image here with the same problem okay this is tilted i'm just going to tilt it back um, here again there's a lot of blue in the background so the computer has thought ah blue add yellow no 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 we don't like that we're gonna add quite a bit of blue back in and then we can see that the tower is a little magenta here. I'm adding a few points of green, but I don't wanna go too far because this side looks nice and neutral. So instead, I'm just gonna go into the shadows and add three points of extra green there. And you can see that that clears up the, the magenta shadow there. Okay, this is quite a bit of editing. You don't need to do this much. If you want your pictures to look very, very professional, this is what you would do but there's not necessarily a need to do all of this processing. If you're happy with the results that come out of it um, just by default, which a lot of people are, and it depends a lot on the kind of scenes that you take pictures of, um, you might just wanna add some contrast. Let's say you wanna add eight points of contrast to all your pictures. How do you do that? Well, same thing again, add the contrast. So we went from, from no contrast to a little bit of contrast, and then just sync settings. And that will take that contrast setting and just sync it across all the thing, all of the um, images. Do be aware that it will also sync the other settings. So if you've just done what I did, which was uh, do very careful white balance adjustments, it will remove those and add the sync. I do wish they added a sync option that had like a tick mark for what you want to sync. So um, once you've once you're happy with all, all of your pictures and maybe you want to go through and rotate them and make sure they, maybe you want to crop them. This is not a Lightroom tutorial, we're not going to go too deeply into how to process all your images. But um, once you've uh, cropped and, and gotten ready to send your pictures elsewhere, you right click, so you highlight all the pictures you want to um, export and then you right click and click export here. And Negative Lab Pro has these presets. <clears throat> you can use the NLP positive copy JPEG. That gives you a full resolution JPEG and it saves it in the same folder that uh, your pictures are in. You can also set up your own if you want. I have mine to set up to Google Photos and they just sync automatically to my Google Photos and then I can share them with friends and family. So the next thing we're gonna do is jump into FilmLab app and uh, do exactly the same thing with a slightly different interface. So I'll see you over in FilmLab app. Okay, now we're back here in FilmLab app and we've imported our pictures. Uh, same thing, if you open a folder, you get this uh, kind of folder view. If you open just a single picture, you'll just be thrown straight into the editing view. But this folder view is very useful if you wanna do more than one picture because it allows you to do apply batch processing. 
So by selecting uh, all of the pictures, Command A in this case, uh, we go to Image and then to Process As, and then uh, Process as Color Negative. So you can see that I'll just flip all the pictures quite instantly to, um, to positives. However, they look a little off. Um, so we're going to do the same thing and go through them bit by bit, and I'll show you a few quick edits that I would do, and then also look at the rest of the editing interface. So clicking spacebar here, you get to the editing interface, and now from here you can move back and forth by using your arrow keys. Um, at the top here, you have a setting called density. That's essentially your brightness. If you at some point feel like, oh no, I've gotten lost with my manual edits, you can click this thing at the top. This is auto apply settings, and I will just go back to its auto default. Um, so in this case, picture is a little bright. I'm just going to take down the density, uh, increase the density a little bit. And now we have the same problem again here. It's very magenta because of that green background. So we're going to dial in quite a bit of green. Um, brown there, that's pretty good. And again, now it's a little cold, so we're going to add a little bit of warmth. I think the shadow's a little too open on this particular picture, so I would drag the shadows down a little bit. Um, other than that, there are various settings for uh, kind of detail and fine tuning your saturation and contrast. There's also a choice for light source here. Uh, we are working on adding the EC35 light source into the um, software. That's hopefully coming soon. So if you're seeing this in the future, that might already be there. And then also the capture device profile is the type of camera you're using. So it will have presets for different um, sensors. In this case, it was already selected for a Sony sensor, which is what we're doing. It should auto select based on the file that you're using. Fourth correction is uh, if you're experiencing vignetting, you can uh, use that. Do look at the documentation from Film Lab app to see how that works. Uh, the scanning flare protection is not useful for is the EC35 because there is no flare. Your, your, your uh, film is completely enclosed by the tube of the EC35. So with this editing, uh, you could go back so um, we've done our settings. If we wanted to apply all of them, we could uh, go here and so if we can first copy the setting by clicking Command C. So we can go up here or, uh, no, it's not there, it's here, copy, uh, Command C. And then we can select all the pictures and paste those. So now we're, just, we're pasting the settings that we applied. We can see that that looks not necessarily great. It looks good on this second picture, so these two look pretty good, but it doesn't look so great uh, on these other pictures. And that's just because the processing isn't the same across all the pictures. So my primary way of doing, of uh, unless you're very consistent files, which this role is not consistent, I would just go and uh, process this color negative and I will apply all the auto settings and then go through them picture by picture and do little changes. So this is maybe a little too blue, so I'm going to add some yellow. There's not much else I would do to this picture. This one, we have again the problem with a lot of blue, making it very um, yellow. So I'm going to dial in quite a bit of blue and maybe a tad of green. That looks quite good. And I'm just using my arrows going, arrow keys going through here and doing that. It's Here on this picture, you can see that there's quite, uh, I'm looking at this green, sorry, blue um, asphalt. It should obviously be gray, it's asphalt. It's typically not blue. Um, so you can use that as a reference if you want, or there is also sun in the picture so that you kind of have two different white balances you can choose to look at. I would probably go somewhere in between. Now the grass looks a little too yellow, so I might dial it back a little bit, but, um, this is a subjective uh, thing. They are you are talking about the final results of your pictures. It's um, something that the lab would do for you, and it's part of the service of scanning. Sometimes they do it less well. Sometimes they do it well, very well, but they do generally not care as much as you do. So while you might spend um, thirty seconds on each picture, each picture, they might spend five seconds on each picture. Um, 
you can dial in results that are more to your liking than what you would probably get from the lab. But it does take a little bit of time. Taking your time in this stage of the process can make you a lot happier with your pictures. Here's again that blue we're dialing in for the sky and this one has actually handled the shadow a little bit better than Negative Lab Pro, I would say. Um, but the brightness is a little weird. It's a little under, under what I would prefer. So, once you're happy with all your pictures, you uh, go back to the, the folder view by clicking this top left arrow, highlight all your pictures. If you do actually want to export all of your pictures, um, sorry, you put, go to file and then you can, here you can select your export format. Um, if you do want to export as TIFF, you can continue pr processing these in Lightroom. I would usually just export um, JPEGs and then you can click um, export here and that will send them to a to the same folder that uh, they're in but in a export format that you can share. So that's a brief overview of FilmLab. Um, as I said at the start of the video, there are other alternatives to FilmLab and Negative Lab uh, Pro. You can go read about those on the website or in the manual. Um, for now, that's it for processing your negatives and I hope your results with the EC35 come out great. Do feel free to email us or get in touch, uh, for example, on Instagram if you have problems with any part of the process and we're sure to help you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.